I'm Steve Halleck of TikToking. This is Erwork, and you're watching What Makes This Brand Great. I am so excited to have you guys here today doing my first episode of a new series, What Makes This Brand Great, featuring Erwork, which you guys know is one of my all time favorites. Okay, before we start, a little bit of housekeeping. Please click subscribe, click the notification bell, all the things that YouTubers ask you. I have to do it. Apparently, it's something with the YouTube algorithm. The more subscribers, the more notifications, the more it thinks that my content is worthwhile and it'll actually show this to people. And this is the whole reason I'm making this stuff. I really want people, if they're searching for watches, if they're trying to get knowledge, to understand what makes these independent watch brands great and why they're worthy of their attention so we can start you know, focusing attention on the good guys instead of uh, all the junk that's out there. So please do that for me, do it for Erwork and independent watchmaking in general. All right, great. Now let's get into it. Uh, what makes this brand great? What am I trying to do here? So I'm not trying to do a full history of Erwork or any of these brands. I'm not trying to take you through their entire catalog. I'm not even trying to uh, teach you everything that there is to know, right? What I wanna do is show you how I think about these brands and their contributions to watchmaking and the kind of history of independent watches. And the way I do that is to look at kind of a single factor of what is this particular brand all about. So of course, all of them have some horological chops. All of them have some cool finishing, cool machining, uh, interesting takes on things, whatever. But where does this brand really stand out? What is it that they really bring to the table and have been influential about? Okay, that's the point of this series. So <clears throat> for Erwork, that is really represented in their founding team. They're the only brand that is founded by an artist and designer, Martin, and a watchmaker, a genius, brilliant AHCI watchmaker, Felix Baumgartner, right? So that's what Erwork is really about, and you're gonna see this, and I'm gonna show it to you in the watches, this fusion of art and design and really cool solutions to very everyday mechanical issues that come up, okay? So it's not about reinventing new complications. It's not about finish. It's not about rate keeping necessarily, although they've done some cool things with that. Um, what it's about is melding really amazing artistic aesthetics with really cool solutions for what a watch can be now that, you know, we don't need a watch anymore after the quartz uh, issues in the 70s. You know, we've got our phones, we've got quartz watches. What do we need a mechanical watch for? Well, Erwork's answer is this art design mixed with really cool solutions and cool kind of time telling features, right? So let's dig into the watches. Let's see how they got there. All right, here I have a whole array. We're gonna go from the 103s into what replaced the 103, the 105, and then the 210, which is kind of the big daddy of uh, Erwork, right? So let me clear some of this out here. Too many watches. All right. So let's start first with these two 103s. This you'll recognize from my channel is the prototype. If you haven't seen my video on this watch, it's entitled uh, the most important watch I've ever owned. And it really is. This is the actual prototype that was shown at Basel in order to basically continue the brand. Everything that you've seen since then, and therefore all of their influence on the entire watch world came from the success of this actual watch at Basel. Uh, so really, really cool. I urge you to check it out. But here you can see already what becomes all the signature Erwerk stuff. Uh, it, it's all present here, right? So you have, of course, their classic time telling, which in this case is these discs that rotate around and come down and through this minute track and all in this, you know, wild case for the time. Now it looks kind of tame compared to some of their stuff. But at the time, this was a, you know, really wild case. You've got this kind of retro futuristic sci-fi thing. And you start getting these very Erwork signature things such as using the side of the case as a design element, you know, getting into the third dimension. You've got this engraving of uh, the uh, exposed metal parts 
as a sort of design motif. You've got this giant crown that you'll see on most Urworks. Of course, it's a manual wind watch, so that's a, you know, a, a very nice and useful thing, but also definitely a design element. And, uh, and this starts to show kind of what they're doing horologically, where they kind of tackle these little challenges without you necessarily even knowing them. So uh, what I'm talking about here is the fine adjustment screw, which a lot of people don't even notice on the 103, but this is so classic Urwerk and what they're about kind of horologically, these crazy ways of telling time, but also solving little issues in really cool mechanical ways. So in the case of the 103, you are able to adjust the rate keeping faster or slower with just a normal screwdriver from the back of the case. So this is a really cool mechanical solution to a big watchmaking problem and a problem that just a kind of normal watch guy has. And it's just solved in this watch in a super elegant way. And this is, again, really what Urwerk is about and what makes this brand great is this mix of using horological chops to create these really cool art pieces and then also these very interesting solutions to uh, some mechanical issues that we all have. So moving on from the Proto, you then have the production piece of the 103. And uh, this is kind of interesting to see just how they iterated on it. So you've got now the black disc, the printing, uh, which is white on the black. It's much more legible. The overall finish is much better. Now you have a gold case. So they made that stainless prototype because they couldn't afford gold cases, but they always wanted the watch to be gold. Uh, they're, they're a high horology brand, but you don't necessarily know it just from looking at them, which is what I think is one of the coolest things in actually owning an Urwerk is it doesn't immediately look like a luxury product. Um, but, you know, as a starting out brand, they kind of had a chip on their shoulder a little bit and they, they thought that they needed to put them in gold cases so people could at least realize the kind of level of stuff that they were dealing with. So here you have the white gold case. You know, they don't look terribly different. Steel, white gold. But they never actually made the 103 in steel. They only made it in white gold uh, aside from this proto. So uh, anyway, you have that. You have uh, the finishing on the back is quite a bit nicer. Everything's just a little bit more put together. Um, but again, 103, right? So then they go and completely open up the top. So now you've got this really cool sapphire piece and you start to be able to see more of the movement itself. So this is, uh, Urwerk is now leaning into their horological chops and their time-telling mechanisms to show you this cross with the discs and exactly how they move um, although they still hid the turnover underneath that piece to give it a little bit of mystery. But this is really the piece that the brand blew up with. Uh, it started with the 103.03 .03, and then all the, the ones after that with these opened up tops. Uh, Urwerk got a lot more popular with these. And again, you can just see the finishing is getting better and better as it's going, the fit and finish, but you still have this melding of art and design with the really cool horological solutions, right? So then they discontinued the 103 and they replaced it with the 105. Now, at some point along the way, the Urwerk aesthetics got a lot more kind of aggressive and you can see that here, especially in this black version. It's got a real sort of Terminator vibe to it. Uh, but again, you can see all of the side is used, the top, the engravings, the line work, all of these interesting shapes here, uh, a lot of really complex machining. And, you know, as they got more and more resources, they were able to do more and more complex things. This is an incredibly complex case that they've machined here. Now, some cool things about the 105 are they really made an homage to both the early and the late 103s. So in its normal way of wearing it on the wrist, you have just the kind of window here, like that early 103. But if you want to see the mechanism, like the later 103s, they've made this hinged top that opens up, and now you can see everything in there. And you can see they've now skeletonized a lot of the pieces. Uh, the manufacturing is much more text technical. Uh, you have almost no like off-the-rack parts here. You have a lot more 
manufacturing challenges, uh, these cool skeletonized wheels, interesting materials, all sorts of stuff like that, uh, but it's all very, very Urwerk. And again, you have Urwerk solving really clear technological problems without people even noticing it. So down here, now you have a running seconds. That's kind of a cool like digital seconds basically. And that works in with the hour and minute and just sort of seamlessly goes there. So that's a really neat solution there. And then on the back, instead of the control board, now the 105 is automatic and they've completely rethought what an automatic system could be. You know, one problem is that uh, in an automatic rotor, you've got this winding rotor that's around a central pinion. And so if it goes really fast, it's a weight that basically provides a lot of torque on the movement and can cause problems. So they've developed this system with wind turbines that can provide an air brake on the rotor and the user can change the amount of braking on it based on his or her activity, right? So you can click it all the way over here to stop and that makes it just a manual wind watch where the rotor cannot spin at all. Uh, or you can put it in the middle here. So if you're gonna be active, but you still want it to wind, now the air brake uh, provides a kind of counter force on the rotor so that it can't spin too fast and damage the movement. Uh, and then you can open it all up. So again, this is super Urwerk, basically coming up with these really cool technical solutions to everyday watch problems and incorporating them into a piece of real art and design. That is Urwerk, and that's what I want you guys focused on with Urwerk, okay? Let's go to the 210. The 210 is kind of the ultimate piece. Here, they brought uh, basically the mechanism that Felix did in the Opus 5 with Max Bucer, with Harry Winston, and this is the first time he brought this mechanism into an Urwerk. So again, you see a total art piece, new shape of a case, new aspect ratio. It's actually quite thin, it's wide. It's got this huge wide open crystal where you can see this whole mechanism. But still you have the big crown, you have these lines, uh, engraving lines. This is the black platinum version. So even black platinum, it's so Urwerk, right? It's Super luxury platinum, but it's black. So nobody knows it except the wearer of the watch. Super cool, like a very Urwerk thing, right? And here you have the classic Urwerk uh, mechanism, basically with uh, hour numbers that are turning and this minute that goes around. But here you have it with these cubes that are turning and this big spring hand that flies back as it goes. And now you can see also the architecture is incredibly intricate. All of this machine work, uh, you know, all of this technical side is really uh, put to the forefront, but within this art piece of a watch. Now again, some really cool technical solutions that nobody's ever seen before. So up here you have a power reserve. Okay, normal. The power reserve counts basically how much wind is in the mainspring barrel, but up here, you have, I think they call it like an effort meter or something like that. And basically, if you paid attention in calculus, this is like a first derivative of the power reserve, basically. So super useful because, okay, you have an automatic watch. You don't know how much you're moving, how much wind is going in or out. You know, you can't tell how, when little changes happen in the power reserve. But basically, this shows you as the day is going, over the last hour or two, or I don't know exactly how long, but certain amount of time, uh, are you adding wind or are you subtracting wind? Are you moving enough that the watch is getting more wound or are you not moving enough that the watch is, you know, using some of its own power? And that's a really cool, you know, classic Urwerk solution to a small issue in watches. You know, how do we make a modern watch actually better with cool, mechanical solutions. And that's what you get with Urwerk within an art piece, right? So, okay, why do we need to know this? What's the point? What am I getting at? So now if you see Urwerk and you think this is what they do, this is their point of existing. Now you know how to slot them in with other brands and you can go towards your own taste. What do you care about? Do you really care about the ultimate in 
intricate handmade parts, craft, um, you know, finish, that sort of thing. In which case, Urwerk might not be the brand for you. Maybe it doesn't speak to you. But if you care about somebody completely reimagining what a watch can be in, you know, 2022 or 20, 2003 or whatever, you know, in this new period, uh, and these aesthetics and these mechanical solutions and, and that sort of thing, then Urwerk is the brand that brought that to the world of watchmaking. And, you know, you can help explain this to other people. This is what Urwerk does. This is why they're important. This is what makes it different from, you know, some crap brand that just has, you know, some weird way of telling time. No, Urwerk is an amazing artist and designer mixed with an amazing watchmaker making these fusions of solutions that are just fantastical instruments of modern watchmaking. And you can see their influence reverberating throughout the watch world from the early 2000s into now. Nothing would be the same without these original artworks. So this is the point of what makes this brand great to zoom in on the really intricate, amazing, you know, kind of ethos behind each brand so that you can delineate them and you know what speaks to you, why they're great, why they've been influential on others, and kind of the interplay between all of these. So I hope that's really helpful. Please, you know, feel free to share it. The whole point of these is to help you explain what you like to uh, people who might not understand quite as much. So, you know, you just got your new artwork or you're pining over this thing and your wife doesn't get it or your buddies don't get it and you wanna share, uh, hopefully this video helps to explain. So thank you very much for watching. I'm really looking forward to doing a bunch of these with my favorite brands, but for now, what makes this brand great? Well, artwork is just as cool as it gets. All right, thanks.